Oh, I think this is where it's gonna get worse. Last time on Sailing Solianus, we took you on a Technicolor tour of Grafton, the town that sits at the confluence of the Illinois and Mississippi rivers. We got to see the inner workings of a towboat. This is where the navigation of the vessel takes place. All right. All right. <laughs> and then we jumped in our own boat to tackle the mighty Mississippi ourselves. If it gets much foggier though, it's going to be pretty sketchy. We made it! There's just one after another. been kind of dreading this part of the trip. Yeah. It hasn't been that bad. No, it's sort of been the best part. Yeah, it really has. All right, you're going to start letting us out. Oh, this line is frozen. Okay, let us back. All right, I'm free, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of mud. That's thick stuff. Hey, Lauren, should I bump you forward? We need to wash down. This was the end of the Mississippi for us. From Lake Michigan until now, it's been all downriver. But once we turn onto the Ohio, we'll be pushing upstream for 300 miles until the end of our route on the Tennessee River. We are about to start pushing some serious water. We're doing 8.3 right now in about five minutes. We'll probably be doing two, maybe three. I bet four. All right. We just crossed the line. Bye, Mississippi. You've been nice. Very, very fast. That's our new speed. Oh yeah. Well, I think the current is probably still going to pick up because it's still swirling a little bit. We're 6.7 through the water and 2.7 over ground. Four knots of current. Yeah. This is the Olmsted Locks and Dam project, which was just recently completed. It was built to replace locks 52 and 53, which were both barely hanging on. It took the Army Corps of Engineers nearly 30 years to complete the Olmsted project, due to its complexity and funding that came in fits and starts. It's the largest and most expensive inland waterway project ever undertaken in the U.S. Its cost of $3 billion is estimated to pay for itself after four years of operation. After leaving Boston Bar that morning, it was just 52 miles to the transient dock in Paducah, Kentucky. But with the four to five knot current, we weren't able to make it. Our hangup was lock 52. We needed to be there before they closed at 7 p.m. for them to allow us passage. That night, we anchored literally on the side of the river, in between several toes playing the same waiting game until the lock opened in the morning. Yeah, this is where it's going to get worse. Damn, look at that wave. 
The closer we got to Loch and Dam 52, the stronger the current got. This was due to the dams forcing the water through a more narrow section of river. What's our speed over ground? 1.7. Our speed over ground kept climbing, and in a few miles, we'd made it. We'd completed our trip on the Ohio River. Okay, back up there for just a second. A lot of things just happened that were hard to see. At 57 feet, this was our tallest lock yet. It was also our first lock heading upriver. So instead of being gently lowered down, the water boiled up all around us. It turned out to be our worst lock experience. It was incredibly turbulent near the end, and even with fenders out, we struggled to keep the boat from bashing the wall. It got so bad, the lockmaster called us on the radio to see if we were okay. We pushed with everything we had, and as you saw, we made it out okay. We learned then, going up a lock is very different from going down. We pulled into Kentucky Dam Marine at a fuel up and stuck around to use their courtesy car to get groceries and some additional plumbing bits and bobs from the hardware store. This was our largest fill-up yet. The last marina we fueled up at was 227 miles back on the Mississippi. We keep a detailed log of engine hours, so knowing that it took 34 hours for us to motor those 227 miles means we averaged just under three quarters of a gallon per hour. What'd you find? Something living <laughs> in our water hose. <laughs> this was the hose coming from our port side water tank. The previous owners didn't live aboard, so they only ever used the starboard tank. A lot of good stuff in there. Oh gosh. It needs to go outside though, with the rest of the moldy, moldy oldies. Replacing this plumbing was one of the dozens of things on our to-do list that we didn't get to before leaving the dock in Wisconsin. Looks like the princess and the pea is sleeping back there. We just spent two nights at the Kentucky Dam Marina. I got myself a haircut. We fueled up. We groceried up. Uh, we did not clean the boat up, but we cleaned ourselves up, showered, shaved, all that good stuff. Hi. And now we are headed across the glassy flat calm Kentucky Lake over to What's the name of the marina? Lighthouse Landing Marina. Lighthouse Landing Marina. Yeah, I think it's a sailboat paradise. I'm oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's beautiful out right now though. Yeah. The forecast for the next two days wasn't as pretty, so we figured we'd hole up in a slip and crank out some computer work. We decided to leave Kentucky Dam Marina for Lighthouse Landing for a change of scenery and also their cheaper rate, 75 cents a foot. We've got a straight up wind chime going here. Nobody knows how to secure their halyards apparently. We are quite possibly the only boat in this marina not making a noise right now. Oh man.
After the muddy Mississippi and Ohio rivers, Solianus really needed a bath. Not too bad. I'm quite hot now. <laughs> it's one way to get a workout in. Kirk so kindly took on the task while I was out for a run. The dock lines off? I did. Okay, do you need Usually we're both on deck for departure, but sometimes he'll prep the boat by himself while I'm still editing in the cabin. You don't need any help. Okay. Just with that haircut of yours. So I flew on boots of leather from Mercia. To the place where they had said they saw you last. Ah, this is directly in the sun, huh? Hi. Woo. So, where are we headed, love? We don't know yet. <laughs> South. There's about two dozen bays that cut into the state park here in between, in between. It's called Land Between the Lakes. And we're gonna go pick one for tonight's anchorage. And from where I come, oh, I could see was swallowed by the sound of you in the cherry tree. We poked our nose into one bay, but we weren't really comfortable with the swinging room. All right. Never mind. Sorry, No Name Creek. <laughs> Well, shoot, now we're gonna get there at 547. The next morning, we continue down south down the 184 mile long Kentucky Lake to Paris Landing State Park, where we saw the familiar lines of another Tartan 37. This is the first sister ship I really got to inspect in person. It was really interesting to see all of the differences in the rigging and the way the boat was set up. Without much notice, Kentucky Lake bled right into the Tennessee River. And this would have been really difficult to do. That night, we had a little time to finish the plumbing on the water tank. What you got going on here? I'm heating up the hose to make it more pliable so it'll fit smoothly over the nipple and so it'll bend nicer when I put it on. It's working. <laughs> we got more water. Well, too bad water's clear because that's not very exciting. <laughs> It is so cool. Sorry, that was really bad. 
It's actually not cool. It's really, really freaking cold. Where did you get that? This is off of our deck. It's quite pretty this morning, huh? Very pretty. It makes the cold not feel as cold. It lights your face, it lights the night. We lose the phosphorescent fight. We rise. 